So the thing I was after with the White House here was the sun's right over on that side over there at the moment and it's coming across sideways so we're getting side lighting and side lighting just brings out all the drama and all the shape so that means on the hillside all the rocks will be really prominent and look really three-dimensional and then the building itself which is a slight diagonal to us and also catching a side light you can't really get a more dramatic lighting for the actual subjects than that so that's why I wanted to get here at this kind of day to take this kind of shot so I'll take it now and you'll be able to see what I mean when I take the exposure for this I'm slightly underexposing it I'm trying to make sure that I've got all the detail there in the sky and also the building itself is white as well so I want to make sure that I don't blow any of that out as well in this case, because of this side lit, I'm not usually going to get any really strong highlights. The sky is not going to be the brightest point over there. The whites of the building and also the rocks as well are not going to be particularly bright. So I can do that all in one exposure. I don't need to bracket that when it's side lit. It's only once I get into back lit that there's a huge contrast difference between the ground and the sky. That's when I want to start thinking about bracketing more of the side lit shots. You can just do in one exposure most of the time. just to show you, you don't need a tripod a lot of the time. The only time you really need a tripod is for two things. One is you're going to do long exposure and two is sometimes if you're going to do bracketing. But even that you can do handheld but it's going to get me a, an angle that I can't get with a tripod because I can't get a tripod that low so I'm going to get a different kind of shot by balancing the camera on the rocks. Now as I suggested in my other videos it's better to use an old camera, one that's already quite scratched up, especially when you're doing landscape photography otherwise you end up treating the camera too carefully and not getting into more unusual positions by like getting the camera against the rocks and right up to things. So the next thing to do is try and bounce the camera carefully and hope that it doesn't drop. But like I said, the advantage is being able to get into these angles. I can use live view as well to frame up the shot. When you get to some spot where you're going to take your photos, it, there's usually one shot that's really obvious to you and it's worth getting that. But then spend another 45 minutes or an hour even just wandering around looking for different shots, trying to find something interesting. And by doing that, you can go to a location such as this where it has been shot to death by everyone. But if you haven't done it, then you haven't done it. So it's still new for you. There's still value in doing it. It doesn't matter if everyone's seen the location before. If we thought like that, then we're going to run out of locations really, really fast. By all means, I think, shoot the obvious shot, the same one that everyone takes. But then once you've done that, wander around, get down low, find somewhere higher up, experiment, look for unusual angles, get your camera away from your tripod. You know, I think that the tripod can be the thing that kills the freedom to explore a lot of the time it doesn't mean don't take it with you but what i'm saying is you don't have to use it on every shot and be thinking about it all the time i think it becomes a burden in that sense it can stifle creativity especially when you're looking for a shot and you see everyone getting the same kind of photos it's because sometimes there's the freedom to move around isn't there so put the tripod and you walk around and use your camera handheld and then by all means break out the tripod again when you found that extra special shot and you got something that you can make more of a statement with. So you know what's funny? It's golden hour, right? The sun's just going down. All day long this area is packed with photographers and at the best time of day with the best lighting, I'm the only one here. <laughs> Everyone else has gone home for dinner. Yeah, I've got the whole place to myself, it's just me. That's it, which is great. Not complaining, obviously not. <laughs> I'm 
But well, this is what I want to get. Try and get a shot from down here if I can. With some of this nice lighting in the water. And then the house in the background. So I'm going to climb down and see what I can get. I just hope that the house isn't going to be obscured by these rocks down here. So actually in the end I realised there's no angle from here. So I'm going to go under the brick. I'm going to climb back over and then go underneath into that area there. And then try and shoot. Because I want to get all this water here with all this nice little bit of lighting on it. So then I can hopefully shoot across and and get the house in the background because down at the bottom here there's no angle that rocks in the way and that, the house is just not visible yeah that's it look look at that So that's that shoot done. I'm happy with that. I got some different compositions. I was really hoping that everyone would clear out from earlier and that uh, I would be able to explore more on my own and um, see what I can get. And that's happened. So it's been a good day, really. Pretty pleased with that, I must say. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. I'm going to be doing lots more videos like this. I'm also going to be doing ones where I'm camping on the top of these things and getting some more unusual and harder to get shots and taking you guys along like this for the journey as well so if you like that please subscribe feel free to leave me a comment and if you've enjoyed it then like the video and i will see you guys again in the next one